Hey everybody, Kenny here. So in today's video, we're going to do things a little different for this build video. Now, if you've been watching my channel, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but for I guess the last month now, I've been playing this character, actually basically since the league start, I've been playing this character, Darifus, after work, you know, one or two times per week. And I only played them up until the point that I got them to the end of part one, start of part two of the campaign, as I do with all of my builds, since that's the self-imposed rule I do for myself. You know, just so I'm, I'm not playing this game all year round. <laughs> so... While I was playing it, the whole point was I was I had a build in mind, but I knew that gem wise I was going to need to have at least a five link to be able to pull it off. And since I, you know, I don't rely on ever finding anything like that during any league. You know, I didn't believe I would be able to do the build I wanted and I and that ended up being the case. I didn't end up finding anything that let me do the gem build I wanted to do. So I made basically a, a very standard Inquisitor build. And it's standard to the point that it's not a build that I feel comfortable recommending on its own. So today what I'm going to do is instead of just showing off the build that I spent the last month on, I'm going to be showing my Inquisitor build along with my Hierophant build. They're very similar in their setups, but I believe they offer enough vari variation to give a good sample for anyone who's interested in playing a Templar and want to see what the options are that are available to them. Just finished loading up into Lion's wa Lion Eyes Watch here. So with this character, this is actually the first Templar I ever made. Yeah, you know, eight years ago now, <laughs> and for years now, all I've been doing with this character is just anytime there's a reset, I just <laughs> uh, I just use them as a means of testing out other builds that I want to run with different characters. But since I wanted to have a They're just another build to work off of for how to help someone play a Templar this league, I decided to give him a little love and actually give him a working functional build instead of just you know, Frankensteining something together that I wanted to try with a different character. So what I came up with here is kind of a standard Hierophant, but instead of focusing on the uh, on the totems, which is kind of the like the big thing with the Hierophant. And mind you, like yeah, they've added a lot more that they can do over the years. But like when they first added it, like the main reason to go Hierophant was so you could, you know, get your extra totem from here, as well as an ancestral bond. But then GG decided to add the multiple totem support at some point, which essentially made it that. Anyone who was running a multi-totem build for all this time is able to do a multi-totem build without having to invest in any of that. So, <laughs> so instead of doing the normal totem thing, I decided I've never met, played around with Arcane Surge. So I wanted to see what this was about going for Arcane Blessing. So Arcane Blessing 
By going on this line, you improve the effect of Arcane Surge by quite a bit. And you make it that when your totems or you hit anything with spell damage, you just gain Arcane Surge. So instead of the normal... I talked to Lady Roth here. Look at the actual Arcane support. What uh, well, Arcane Surge, how it's supposed to work is that it activates based on the upfront cost used of the spell that support it's supporting. But with since I have just invested in Arcane Blessing, I just get it. I don't need to have it connected to anything. I just get Arcane Surge without the need of the support. So I decided to, you know, go down this line and get the passives that support Arcane Surge. So along with the 60% from Aerofont, I gained an extra 10% increased effect of Arcane Surge there. And another increased effect of Arcane Surge, but in this case, it's an additional 10% per 200 mana spent recently, up to an additional 50% effect of Arcane Surge. As you can see on the bar there, Arcane Surge grants an additional 10% spell damage and 30% mana regeneration for 4 seconds while it's active. And since we have increased the effect of it by up to 110% extra, Up to 120% extra. <laughs> like the... Yeah, the bonus is considerably better. And then the mastery I picked here is just additional... Uh, mana regeneration while Arcane Surge is active. At the start over here, I grab the... Just one point in the mana regeneration and, li and flat life from there. I went through the damage nodes here, grabbed the elemental damage, grabbed retribution here for the increased damage, increased attack speed and cast speed, and the stats. Went down here for the extra life, grabbed the extra armor, energy shield, regen, went and grabbed the reduced mana cost and increased mana. Went through and got the extra elemental damage, the increased elemental resistances, Increased chance to freeze, shock, and ignite. Grab the increased spell damage. Increased crit chance for spells. Increased stats. Extra elemental damage. Head on this way for some increased life and increased the effect of non curse auras. Down this way, grab some more armor and energy shield. And made it that. I take reduced damage from, or re reduced extra damage from critical strikes. And up this way, got even more armor and energy shield, as well as some extra element resistances. As I showed, I already showed what's in, what I got from there. And up here to grab the extra totem damage and placement speed, as well as increase the Cast speed of the totems. This also gets us extra totem life and duration. And they grab the totem mastery that makes it when I would summon a totem, I have a chance to summon two totems instead. Which you will see me using quite a bit. So in here, grab some energy shield and life. And grab the extra flat life from the mastery. Get over here to grab the Extra stats from, from there. Grab some extra mana and energy shield. As well as the mastery to let us regenerate some energy shield per second. I have some extra st extra points that I could mess around with, but I'm not going to. The gear that we have going here, nothing special, honestly. Uh, these are my, uh, my gloves from when I ascended with this character. You see that level-wise, this is these are level 32 gloves. 
They have very bad armor and energy shield on them. Uh, they have some good intelligence. And they have some fire resistance. But mainly it's for... Uh, the Word of the Grave, which is the... If you haven't seen it before, it's... Or maybe if you have and you just didn't know what it was. Uh, this is the one that when you get hit... I'm oh, sorry, like when you kill something, uh, you'll see like little like ice skulls like show up. I guess kind of like... Uh, Good tidings to you. you see, getting the name. I say burning skulls. No, that's not the name. I just put minion. Minion, please. Summon raging spirit. That's what it's called. They're kind of like summon raging spirit, but you know, but ice skulls instead of fire skulls. Our belt. Uh, just energy shield, some extra life, and some resistances. Our boots, just some dexterity intelligence. Some extra evasion rating. But, yeah. Honestly, the, <laughs> like these these aren't great boots. So, honestly, I think if we look at our defenses, that... We'd... Yeah, it's not actually enough evasion rating to even... Show up as as allowing us to evade any attacks. So that doesn't actually do anything for us. There's a tiny amount of energy shield. Really, all we're getting from that. It's basically the flat life and the stats are really all these is doing for us. Uh, on our chest, like we're using a five link. It the five link doesn't really matter. Like I'll show I'll show what, what's on there in a minute. But uh, so the piece itself is just. Energy shield uh, with extra life and a little bit of fire resistance on it. Our ring here, the extra mana, extra energy shield, and some mana regeneration. Our ring here is for the extra resistances. We get uh, some extra. It's tiny, very tiny bit of evasion. Doesn't even matter. So the really the global accuracy is probably. The only extra that we're getting from here. So it's really just for the resistances. Our amulet here is a corrupted stat amulet. So it's, but you know we got some good cold resistance on there, some really nice flat life on there. A little bit of leech, but doesn't matter. And some extra elemental attack, but doesn't matter. Our hat, uh, so we're doing arm energy shield here. Now some life, some fire resist. Uh, we're using a wand that has some uh, really like the added spell damage on this is really not good at all, but it gives a a very good increased critical strike chance for spells, and it gives us some fire damage to spells. It's a small amount of fire damage to spells, but you know, still nice. This one, just spell damage and also fire damage to spells as well as increased mana regen. So it's pretty good. Gem wise, we are using. So the arc, we're not actually using at all. <laughs> Arcs on here, but this like, these aren't being used in. And what you're going to be seeing me doing out on the field. Uh, the sum, the lightning golem I will be using. So for the... Ink, like just to give me extra attack and cast speed. Over here I'm using flame dash as our escape. The ice nova I'm not using either. On our gloves here. We have our holy flame totem. With multiple totem support. With combustion for the increased burn and greater textiles, so it does multiple jets of flame. Boots here, we have our clarity that we will be using 
And this Glacial Cascade we don't use either. It's on here, but we're not using it. On our helmet, we have Cold Penetration, Increased Area Effect, and Concentrated Effect. So th <laughs> these were supporting the Glacial Cascade. Now they're supporting nothing, and they're just sitting there. And what we have in our 5-link is an added cold damage divine ire with cast while channeling for flame surge and trinity now you don't have to do trinity with this that's why that's why i was saying that you know this doesn't really matter i mean like if you could you could drop the added cold damage you could drop the trinity uh I mean, if you were to do this without the cold damage, but you wanted to use a Trinity, then you know, you could just uh, throw on Herald Device. But in this case, I had this 5 link, so I decided to use it. This build, very standard, very standard setup. So it's a cast while channeling along with some totems, but used to So, we saw there, it gets quite effective, we put down our totems, you see that because the chance to, because we have such a high chance to summon that third totem, with that mastery, like basically, like as long as you do it twice, you can basically guarantee you're going to have three totems, as long as you bother to cast the thing twice, so... So that's what I always do. Like I go in, double cast, or you know, to have three of these just lighting up the screen, and then I have my divine ire that is constantly just casting flame surge, and then just doing the big burst at the end. The thing I like about a Divine Ire, while it's charging up, like this area around you is actually causing that, like if anything's near you, that, you know, like you damage anything that's near you. So anything that's directly in that line is going to be taking way more damage, but anything around you is still going to be taking damage as well. So Divine Ire is a very effective skill to use. Put that down. find yeah the right har peace So I'm going to finish up this... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do... 
I'm not going to do the event, but I do want to finish up the Iron Har. Yeah, for basic groups, you know, you can just Divine Ire them down. And then just save. Save the totems for when you need them. Got one left out here. Oh, nice. Okay. Not over that way. Where are you at? There it is. That was a great hunt, Exile. I now will write a mighty poem about it. Yeah. Yeah, so. Very effective, lots of fun. You know, like, uh, just very visually appealing. Like, just being able to... Have just all these totems down, spewing out fire while you're... Getting those big... Like, Dragon Ball Z level spells running. Now we'll switch over to my Inquisitor. Like I said, build-wise, very similar. However, since we took the Inquisitor path in this one, we went for Instruments of Virtue. Now, the reason for getting Instruments of Virtue isn't for the 10% more attack damage for non necessary spells you cast in the past 8 seconds up to a maximum of 30. It's for the Battle Mage. Because what Battle Mage does is the better the weapon is that you have, the stronger your spells are. So this is right now is showing as doing 4,413 damage. I take that off. Now it's 2,600. And the... Like, the weapon makes a huge difference. On this slot, I have this... This weapon. I'm not going to be using this. I just want to show that... You know, so you have a very... Like, even though there's no spell damage on this... Because the damage is so high... There's such high damage on it. Like, our... The damage that it shows is... Incredible. Like, comparatively. So... That's the really, really the only reason to go for Instruments of Virtue is because it gives you so much damage based on the weapon you're wearing. Honestly, I find Inquisitor to be very lackluster. As far as an ascendancy goes, like if you go this way, it's just more crit. This way, more elemental damage. This way, you get Consecration. Like there's no... Like, interesting path. Like, this is probably the most interesting thing it has. The fact that you get more damage because of your weapon. But more damage isn't really an interesting thing. So. Uh, Build-wise, once again, we grab this little one right here for the extra flat life and mana regen. We had it went up this way for the extra damage. We got the extra damage, extra cast speed, extra stats. Went down this way for the extra accuracy, extra attack cast speed. Extra dexterity this way for the extra health, the extra armor, 
energy shield regen stats but in here for the extra energy I'm uh, sorry uh, for the extra mana and health regen we headed out this way to grab uh, the life and energy shield as well as cash resistance and flat life from there went through here for the extra lightning damage and cold damage as well as making it that if we shock or make enemies that we shock or freeze take additional elemental damage and any exposure we inflict from the mastery is a minimum of 18 percent then we head out this way we get some energy shield and mana and we once again grab well we, in this one in this one we grab the mastery to give ourselves extra energy shield based on the amount of mana we have and we grab extra stats from there headed out this way grab the extra energy uh, not, the extra elemental damage extra spell damage crit chance for spells the extra elemental resistances and elemental damage as well as chance to freeze shock and ignite headed to through here for the extra armor energy shield well as the element, extra elemental damage and we grab the mastery that allows our helmet to gain armor based on the energy shield we have in this case we're using a circlet that has an all right amount of energy shield but because we get armor based on how much energy shield we have that's basically a 43 energy shield 43 armor hat then we went out this way grabbed some more life that increased our effect of non curse auras through here we grabbed more elemental damage increased our chance to freeze shock and ignite increased our elemental damage further grabbed the elemental mastery to leech Elemental damage as energy shield. Went through this path to increase lightning and physical. Grab this one to gain 5% of extra damage as uh, physical damage as extra lightning damage. As well as have our damage penetrate 5% lightning resistance. A little more elemental damage and physical damage. And then divide fury. So same thing as the last one just for fire damage. That's our our step build for that. For our gear build, these are our ascension gloves, which are actually pretty good. So we happen to get word of spite on these, which that's the one where when you get hit, that you'll kind of explode with just ice in all directions. Uh, so these got these rolled with some strength, uh, some mana. And some fire resist. I mean, stat, uh, armor energy shield wise is not great, but yeah, you know, like for what's rolled on there is actually pretty good. For our belt, we have some strength, energy shield, life, fire resist, as well as some stun and block recovery. For our boots, we got some decent armor and energy shield, and we got rolled some flat life, some verity, and some more stun and block recovery. Our ring here is a just a, a resist machine. It's got just a ton of resistances on it, as well as some evasion rating, which doesn't matter, and some intelligence on this ring. Just even more resistances, uh, more strength, more flat life, more flat mana, as well as a boost to our accuracy rating. Our amulet just. A nice amount of the stats that we're behind on as well as some lightning resistance and some more flat life once again evasion doesn't mean anything here here we have i guess like yeah, it is doing something we do get 11 percent evade so it is doing something on this one now it doesn't matter but we do have some <laughs> mostly because of our chest which is armor and evasion because i couldn't find the nice uh, armor energy shield chest so our chest has a good amount of armor. Uh, it rolled with some good armor and some good resistances. 
as well as a lot of flat life. Our hat is that circlet that I mentioned before. It rolls with some good accuracy rating on it. And I added some lightning resistance so that way I could shore up our, our elemental resistances. Our shield here is a kite shield, so it has implicit elemental resist, and it rolled with some intelligence, extra armor and energy shield, some flat life, some extra mana regen, it's more than a block recovery. And we have this really good shadow scepter here. I mean, it's not an amazing shadow scepter, but you know, it's pretty good. So it has some good, decent physical damage, uh, some ice damage rolled on it, has extra lightning damage to spells, and some extra cold resist. In terms of gems, we are running. So we have Trinity and Clarity <laughs> connect to this Galvanic field. That doesn't matter. Like they, we use the Galvanic field and we use the Clarity, but the Trinity isn't actually doing anything. It's just there. On our chest, we have Herald of Thunder, Stone Golem, and then added fire damage supporting, I guess, Herald of Ice. And actually, I think it's just supporting the. Stone Golem. I don't think it actually does anything for Herald of Vice. Actually, I guess it does. Yeah. So it does actually affect uh, Herald of Vice. <laughs> okay, it's, it's actually only there because I had a red slot there. And that's really the only reason. <laughs> uh, we are supporting our Lightning Warp with Faster casting and less duration, which allows us to use it more often and faster. Uh, we also have Enduring Cry here. For the... Like, Enduring Cry is an amazing self-heal. And you should honestly, if if you can afford it, you should use... Like, I definitely recommend using this in, like, any build. Just because, like, it's a nice emergency heal to have. On our gloves here, we have Cold Fire Support. We're, we're on our Lightning Tendrils, which is cast while channeling Lightning Conduit. And then on our hat here, we have our Toxic Burst with Spell Echo, Overcharge, and Archmage. So, it gets a ton of damage, but also because of such high damage, and it has overcharge on it. This is actually how we, this is the synergy we have for our lightning tendrils. Well, I mean, not for like for our cast on our cast while channeling lightning conduit with our lightning tendrils. So head out. Yeah, honestly, it's not even really worth using. It isn't even really worth using the Toxic Burst unless there's like a rare, unique enemy around you or a, uh, a magic pack. And honestly, since we can do this so fast, I guess is a fun way to just. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, we're doing so much damage with our with our lightning tendrils that a lot of times the enemies don't even survive. Don't even survive long enough for a tusk burst to go off. If I had a five link, then what I would do. Is either connect a less less variation on fantastic burst so that way it could go off faster, or 
just make it that while we're channeling lightning tendrils that we just cast both uh, lightning conduit and a tasker burst I mean it would lose a ton of damage but it would probably synergize a bit better Since as is, we really only use our Ataxic Burst when we happen across an enemy that might be able to survive doing that. Because oh, as is, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think uh, Lightning Conduit has actually triggered yet. Because nothing has survived long enough for that. Hi there. Yeah. Yeah, it's just ridiculously effective. I mean, honestly, like, if, if the whole point of why I... Why I make these videos was just to show, you know, like, like what could guarantee get you into content faster. Then I would recommend, then out of all the builds I've recommended, this is probably the top build I would recommend just because of how oppressively effective it is. But, like I said, you know, there's, there just isn't a lot of personality to it. Like it, it doesn't do anything significant as far as like having, like you're like, th like this is why you play a Templar, you know. But if you are, if you do want to play a Templar, obviously, well, either of these options, Hierophant, Inquisitor. You know, you will be able to do very well in either case. Like, they're both very effective play styles. This is obviously a much stronger way. I mean, honestly, like, doing, doing this playthrough has made me just absolutely love Altesk Burst. Like, this has become, like, my favorite spell in the game now. Like, I just... And it's not that it does a ton of damage. Like, the fact that it does a ton of damage is nice. It's the fact that... So... Hey, like, I think I explained that. So the way that... Lightning Conduit works... Lightning Conduit deals its damage based on... The shock effect of the enemy. When you use... Overcharge in conjunction with a toxic burst. What you're doing is you're making it that the shocks you're dealing are happening as though you're dealing 600% more damage. And the toxic burst does obscene damage, meaning that you are giving a. Like you are putting a shock on enemies that turns. Even though, like, since it's it, it, since it's part of a Caswell channeling setup, this this lightning conduit is much weaker than what lightning conduit would be on its own. Like, if I was to go and move lightning conduit into, well, let's uh, right here, lightning conduit, put it where the task burst is, and take off overcharge. Now let's put. Well, actually, it has Archmage on it, right? Yeah. Uh, let's put... I don't know. Faster casting. Doesn't matter. So, now we see that Lightning Conduit... It does a tremendous amount of damage. 
just a very high amount of damage. But like as part of this setup, because the shock that we're getting from the Toxic Burst is so high, because of how we're pairing it with Overcharge, like this actually does a ton of damage when it hits. So when an enemy is actually able to survive getting hit by our lightning tendrils while waiting on our task burst, it was able to survive and didn't get hit by task burst and still survive, then this will trigger immediately and do a ton of damage based on what our task burst did. So it's just... Like, like uh, the Hector Burst is just an amazing skill to synergize now. Because before, like, you know, like, I've used it before. And I like the idea of having Chaos and Lightning on the same spell. I thought that was, an, like, neat. But, like, thanks to Overcharge, I feel that that, like, that is... That support makes Votaxic Burst a must-have if you're doing any kind of Lightning build. Like, Votaxic Burst is just... The best spell in the game now. If you're doing, if you're if you're going to use lightning conduit in a the build, then really, I guess just hands down, like one of the best ideas is just to do that. Anyways, so that's gonna be it for the like this build recommendation. So I hope that you know if you're doing Templar. One of these has been something that would interest you in running. And they're both very good at, you know, very good, very effective builds that you could take into, you know, you get through the entire first half of the game. Once again, I don't do builds that go into the later half just because I don't have the time to be playing a character to end game every league. If I did, then all I would do is play Path of Exile. <laughs> and I put too much time in this game to just abandon my whole backlog again, like I did in the past. So, as far as I go, I, <laughs> I'll be back next league with more builds. But for this league, I'm currently done. So thanks for anyone who has been watching these as I've put them out. If you've enjoyed them, please do all of the YouTube stuff, like comment, and subscribe. And I might do one more video for this league, just uh, talking about the uh, the classes that I didn't put up videos for and explain why it is I didn't put up videos for them. But aside from that, uh, for anyone who is just here for FX Out content, I guess I'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, and you have a great day. Bye.